The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a presentation of Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Poets Passion. I'm your host, Jerry Kokich, bringing you classic and original poems written or suggested by you, our listeners. Once again, we are in the month of October, and that means spooky poems to give you chills and help you celebrate this Halloween season. Our first poem, Creepy Crawlings, was written by our very own Jonathan Patrick Russell. They come at night. They are in the shadow. They come out of the woodwork. And more will follow. It's that time of year again, a time of spooks, a time of hauntings, and all those costume kooks. Trick-or-treating, candy-eating, ghosts and ghoulies, pranks and feelings. Halloween is near. Is that a time of cheer? Or is it simply a time for fear? Shadows play in the moonlight, goblins and ghouls delight, phantoms are calling for creepy crawlings this night. So get on your gear, paint your face, grab some candy and feed your face. Trick or treat, smell some feet, and don't forget to get some sleep. Whether old or young, whether short or tall, Halloween is for us all. <laughs> Haunted Houses by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow All houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors the harmless phantoms on their errands glide with feet that make no sound upon the floors. We meet them at the doorway, on the stair, along the passages they come and go, impalpable impressions on the air, a sense of something moving to and fro. There are more guests at table than the hosts invited. The illuminated hall is thronged with quiet, inoffensive ghosts as silent as the pictures on the wall. The stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms I see, nor hear the sounds I hear. He but perceives what is, while unto me all that has been is visible and clear. We have no title deeds to house or lands. Owners and occupants of earlier dates from graves forgotten stretch their dusty hands and hold in Mortmain still their old estates. The spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapors dense a vital breath of more ethereal air. Our little lives are kept in equipoise by opposite attractions and desires, the struggle of the instinct that enjoys, and the more noble instinct that aspires. These perturbations, this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high, come from the influence of an unseen star, an undiscovered planet in our sky. And as the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws o'er the sea a floating bridge of light, across whose trembling planks our fancies crowd into the realm of mystery and night, so from the world of spirits there descends a bridge of light, connecting it with this, or whose unsteady floor that sways and bends wander our thoughts above the dark abyss. Edgar Allan Poe's classic spooky poem called The Conqueror Worm was written in 1843. Lo, tis a gala night within the lonesome latter years, an angel throng, bewinged, bedight, in veils and drowned in tears, sit in a theater to see a play of hopes and fears, while the orchestra breathes fitfully the music of the spheres. Mimes in the form of God on high mutter and mumble low, and hither and thither fly, 
mere puppets they who come and go at bidding of vast formless things that shift the scenery to and fro, flapping from out their condor wings. Invisible woe, that motley drama, oh, be sure it shall not be forgot, with its phantom chased forevermore by a crowd that sees it not, through a circle that ever returneth in to the self-same spot, and much of madness and more of sin and horror, the soul of the plot. But see, amid the mimic rout, a crawling shape intrude, a blood-red thing that writhes from out the scenic solitude. It writhes, it writhes with mortal pangs, the mimes become its food, and seraphs sob at vermin fangs in human gore imbued. Out, out are the lights, out all, and over each quivering form, the curtain of funeral pall comes down with the rush of a storm, while the angels, all pallid and wan, uprising, unveiling, affirm that the play is the tragedy, man, and its hero, the conqueror worm. Our next poem was written by Edna St. Vincent Millay in 1917. The Little Ghost I knew her for a little ghost that in my garden walked. The wall is high, higher than most, and the green gate was locked. And yet I did not think of that till after she was gone. I knew her by the broad white hat all ruffled she had on, by the dear ruffles round her feet, by her small hands that hung in their lace mitts, austere and sweet, her gown's white folds among. I watched to see if she would stay, what she would do, and, oh, she looked as if she liked the way I let my garden grow. She bent above my favorite mint, with conscious garden grace. She smiled and smiled, there was no hint of sadness in her face. She held her gown on either side to let her slippers show, and up the walk she went with pride, the way great ladies go. And where the wall is built in new, and is of ivy bare, she paused, then opened and passed through a gate that once was there. Our final poem was written by James Leeper especially for this episode of Poet's Passion, called The Night of All Hallows Eve. It is a cold and long night. The moon shines bright. The witch's cat, the vampire bat, all creepy and crawly things. On this night, horror is what it brings. As the evening draws near, it is the night of fear. For it is All Hallows Eve, so beware of what you believe, as your eyes might deceive. Once this night ends, you may be able to breathe and have your reprieve. It is the night of nightmares, it is where fear, terror, and screams fill the air. Shadows and creatures lurk in the dark, the dogs in the distance bark. Monsters and terrors come alive on this night. Perhaps your soul may be subjected to fright. Vampires, ghouls, demons, ghosts, werewolves, witches, zombies. Will these creatures of the darkness ever leave me be? For the answer is no. They are always with us so. For they are in our dreams and fantasies, and sometimes in our make-beliefs. Never will they tire and grow old, for they come alive when stories are told. So you ought to be aware, for this night will be a scary affair. The Night of All Hallows Eve. You can hear James Leeper in Dream Realm Enterprises' production of Doctor Who's The Snare in the role of Julian. That concludes another episode of Poets' Passion. I'm your host, Jerry Kokich, and the poets featured in this Halloween episode were Jonathan Patrick Russell and James Leeper, with poems from the public domain by Poe, Longfellow, and St. Vincent Millay. All original poems belong to the author and were used with the author's expressed written permission. Poet's Passion was produced by Rachel Pulliam, 
for Jonathan Patrick Russell's Dream Realm Enterprises. Music was by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, and sound effects were provided by freesound.org. Coming soon to Soul Twin Audios. Your friend Smiley is going to spend the night in a haunted house on a spook hunt. You know what people call it. The death trap. Yes, it's a lot of nonsense. Now, how do we hunt ghosts, Doctor? Huh? How do we do it? Huh? Well, we don't really hunt them. If there should be any in the house, uh, they will come to us. Soul Twin Audios brings you Ghost Hunt. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Rachel Pulliam brings you Old Time Radio Theater for Soul Twin Audios. Stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. Look for us at anchor.fm slash soul twin audios. That's S-O-L-E twin audios. Coming soon to Soul Twin Audios. The morning of June 27th was clear and sunny. Nice day for the lottery, ain't it? It's a nice day for it. You can say that for a fact. I told him I was going to pack up the wagon and just move out. Well, I was going to do it before the lottery this year. Oh, Bill, you talk the same way every year. You can't argue with the folks about the lottery. I've tried. Lottery ain't like it used to be. Soul Twin Audios brings you a recreation of NBC Presents Short Story and produced especially for the Transcontinental Terror by Rachel Pulliam. This program is copyright 2021, all rights reserved, and is brought to you by Dream Realm Enterprises. Warping to new dimensions.